So good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Anto Budiarjo. Welcome to Monday Live. This is something we do every Monday, believe it or not, um, to figure out what the future is for smart buildings or smarter buildings. I should change this slide, shouldn't I? So panelists are listed on Monday Live. Uh, just a reminder that views expressed here are personal, not of any company or organization. Uh, please do post um, questions and, and comments and chat on the on the chat and Q&A. And as a reminder, this slide deck is uh, will be available on mondaylive.org once uh, we are done. So this month, our focus is on industry collaboration um, and uh, it should be an interesting month. And our agenda today, our normal chit chat, and then on the industry collaboration theme, uh, we're gonna have a couple of uh, guests, um, Brad and Ben from BIG. Um, so looking forward to that. Uh, so before we do that, uh, let's um, see what we'll have. Ken, what's going on in your world? Okay, well, we got our October issue online, Collaboration, Integration, and Education. It's been going well, causing some uh, interesting uh, discussions on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, the best read article right at the moment is uh, why cloud and edge intelligence need each other in the smart building space. Uh, it's got getting amazing reads, uh, which is good. Uh, I just submitted a article on collaboration uh, to uh, uh, connected contractor, which I write for every month, and uh, working to working together to achieve. And the impact from deep collaboration is much more than just ours. We inherit large pieces of well thought out, proven, tested, evolving daily technology, which allows us to know more than we are capable of knowing ourselves. Collaboration thinking is an interactive process that involves a higher level of communication and mindset that is different than working alone. I think as an industry, we've, uh, we've kind of been, we tended to do our own thing and we, we did not collaborate. We have not been a, an industry of collaboration. And I think collaboration is a new experience for us and uh, the power, the potential power of what we can achieve by collaborating with folks that have uh, evolved pieces that are evolved further than us are amazing. And uh, we have our expertise, but our expertise in a bigger world, I think ends very quickly. So the idea of coming up with the right collaboration is the new art. Uh, our latest collaboration, of course, is uh, we put together the education session in a few weeks with a few emails and uh, one, one, Zoom, one uh, Microsoft team call uh, so far and it's, it's coming together really well. So uh, that's, I'm really pleased with how, how well this collaboration actually works. And in addition to that, uh, Mark and I have been, uh, been at this collaboration with the collab uh, Connected Connection Community Collab Collaboratory. Never, never say that word. Collaboratory. And uh, we've been at that for, I think this is our ninth year. And uh, Mark's going to take it a little different direction at uh, Vegas. So uh, we're looking, looking forward to that. Uh, I, collaboration in everything. And of course, that's uh, Monday Live's theme for October as well. Great. Wonderful. Thank you, Ken. Uh, what do we have next? Um, Mr. Shulton. Yeah, I'm just continuing on my theme from the last week about um, there's a lot of money being poured into um, smart buildings and acquisitions and partnerships and growth and everything else. So this is coming from Mr. from Joe's uh, newsletter. If you don't get that, he's, he actually puts out an interesting newsletter on um, movements in this marketplace. So I picked out some some pieces from that, um, some interesting ones. For those of you who know Willow, we've got a strong relationship with uh, Microsoft here in the US. Uh, they just did a 43, that's, by the way, that should say 43 million, not billion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I actually did cut and paste it directly from Joe's thing and then I had to go back and look at it. Yes, it's 43 million, not billion. <laughs> it's pre-series B, that would be interesting. 
Yes. Uh, locate if you haven't seen those guys got an interesting software that they do and measurable another one that's also interesting they raised 50 mil in um series c um interesting guys there um and then some action going on with trains and siemens who are buying and acquiring stuff and then there's actually a really interesting article by jll uh, that uh, joe points to um about their uh, significant spike in prop tech funding um, which you know is interesting. It's I, I'm always fascinated by the these companies getting funding to do growth, and then at some point in time, the big guys come along and buy them and do interesting things with them or not. Um, so anyway, some interesting movement there. Lots of money still being poured into the smart building space, which I think actually bodes well for us at the end of the day because money in you know makes things happen, right? Um, especially investment especially from the innovation space. So. Great, thank you. Uh, so I, I, I saw this, I thought it's interesting. I, I remember um, talking to quite a number of you on air gapping systems and um, somebody's figured out how to uh, basically transmit, uh, use the ethernet cable as a way to transmit data. And I don't know how, Good the technology is or how bad it is, I should say. Uh, but I thought this is interesting in uh, this month being the Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So uh, that's all I have. Um, I don't, uh, there's no other slides. Anybody else have any sort of comments? Yeah, I'll, I'll throw a couple things in there. <laughs> Capitalizing on your mention about Cybersecurity Awareness Month. A uh, couple things. It seems like he, in D.C., movement is going fairly aggressively now to pass new cybersecurity uh, laws or whatever you want to call it. So they just announced last week uh, one of my, sorry, I got a blank on that one. But also with respect to cybersecurity is that the insurance companies are now going to system integrators who are putting in systems and want proof that the systems that they're putting in are as cyber secured as possible or whatever they're doing to help ensure the cyber posture of uh, the installation or whatnot. And last thing is, you know, we've talked about uh, ESG on calls here before, and that the DOD now is adopting a, um, a, a new plan called for climate adoption. So I find it interesting now this whole ESG concept is now moving into the government space fairly quickly as well. So that's what I got. Great, thank you. Um, Roger, you were talking about the show last week in the UK, maybe you wanna share that a bit to, with, with the group. Yeah, sure. There was um, <clears throat> Smart Building shows, the first one really that uh, got out the blocks this year. I think all the major um, companies were there one way or another. Um, really well attended, uh, good quality of people. And it, uh, it was for two, two days. Um, there were about four or five different speaking theaters, which were covering, you know, all the good subjects that we, uh, we cover and including management controls and also some of the CRE tech stuff, which is beginning to creep in. But I think one of the encouraging things was also that a lot of newcomers had stand, you know, small stands where you know, new companies were coming into the industry, um, doing a whole variety of things. Um, not all just, interestingly, not all just software. Some, some were sensor companies and others were, uh, uh, were offering services and stuff. But... Uh, it was, it was a good show, and I think that uh, it was very encouraging, as I say, to see a good mix of mm. the people and the quality of people turning out was really good, not people just collecting pens and uh, uh, brochures and stuff. So I think um, there was a good feel that the, the industry is really busy at the moment. Um, you know, there was a lot going on. And uh, I, I think there is certainly still an undercurrent that some of the bigger companies are are still, you know, are on the acquisition trial as well, because I think there's some, some companies there, even now Birio has actually just bought some a company over here and employed someone full time to actually uh, 
start looking out for that sort of stuff too. So yeah, no, it's very vibrant. Great. Thank you. Um, all right, so I'm gonna bring in uh, Brad and Ben uh, on to panelists. Uh, they are from uh, BIG, the Building Intelligence Group. And uh, there's Brad and there's Ben. Hey guys. Hey, Angel. Hey, um, great for you to, uh, to join us today. And um, well, I'm going to hand the, the, the floor, floor over to the two of you. You're going to sort of introduce us to um, BIG or BIG. Um, and um, let's have a, uh, understand what you're all about. And then we can have a chit chat about it. Sounds great. Yeah, thank you, Antel. Thanks to the big live group for having us. I'm uh, sorry, the Monday Live group for having us. So, uh, Ben, why don't we start with introductions? I think we got you on the line here. Uh, I'll go first and then kick it over to you, and then we'll jump into our little presentation before we get to Q&A. So, um, I'm Brad Colt. I am the Director of Technology Design and Planning Services with HGA Architects and Engineers. Uh, we're an integrated AMEP design firm, so I see that as being a really great opportunity for us to be able to start bringing some of the promise of the intelligent building to life being able to have all of that under one roof and be able to be collaborating together. Ben, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Ben Wallace. I'm uh, serving as Executive Vice President of Building Intelligence Group, which we'll be talking about today. And um, I'm also co-founder of Minify Energy, so focused on reducing the carbon footprint and creating value in buildings with uh, Smart building technology implementations, more on the small and mid-sized uh, aged building retrofit side of the world where there's much need, but um, a background in IT and networking and big data that moved me into edge, edge processing and ultimately from IT into OT. Um, so that's a little bit of my perspective. I'm also involved in uh, smart city initiatives that have some overlap with the smart building efforts. All right, thanks, Ben. I'm going to share. You should be seeing that now. All right. So, Building Intelligence Group, what is it? Uh, we go by the abbreviation BIG, short for Building Intelligence Group. And we're a group that gets people together on a local level uh, for networking and education. Uh, we all have a strong passion for intelligent buildings among the people who've been participating and recognize that uh, we need to be deliberate if we want to try and really accelerate the pace of adoption for intelligent buildings. So uh, this all started with a conversation over lunch. Uh, somebody asked a question, so is there a group that gets people together at this local level to meet? It takes you know so many different trades, so many disciplines to be able to deliver intelligent buildings. And you know, we know that there's a lot of conversations going on at ASHRAE and going on at Bixie and going on within these silos but that's antithetical to our notion that we need to tear down these silos and be able to work together to be able to deliver intelligent buildings. So I uh, did a little bit of looking around, couldn't find anybody who was offering local meetups. And I said, you know what? My company's got a conference room. We love being able to host these community type of events. And so for you know, pretty minimal uh, spread of beverages and refreshments, we got uh, about 50 people or so gathered around for some networking and then rolled into a little bit of a presentation and discussion. And I uh, really started asking people, you know, why are you here? What, what is it that drew you to wanting to participate in a group that's talking about intelligent buildings? And we got a lot of different answers and took those all down. And that's really what became topics for our future meetings around discussions and panels and the different events that we had. Uh, so I, I talked to Mark Peacock uh, before we got this group started. And Mark's suggestion was, you know, if you serve cocktails, they will come. And he was right. Uh, it, it certainly helped us out to uh, get people in the seats, but really they were there because of this common interest in this topic. Uh, and we've taken a very crowdsourced uh, volunteer based approach to getting this thing off the ground. And so it started out as you know, kind of a monthly roving cocktail party to kind of deputize somebody else who's going to host the next meeting. They could uh, choose from the list of topics what we wanted to be addressing during the meeting discussions and finding a space for us to meet. And uh, that's kind of how we started out with having those hosts that were uh, holding those local meetings here in uh, the Twin Cities. And before too long, 
uh, we ended up getting introduced to uh, Roy Barnwell, who was attending from uh, DLR. And he said, you know what? Uh, my home base is down in Chicago. I think we got a market for this down there too. Could we just take the same idea? We said, absolutely. You know, it was something that uh, is non-proprietary. We want to be very inclusive. Uh, we applied a lot of what we felt were, you know, the IoT and intelligent building uh, principles to openness and transparency and sharing what's worked well for us. And so as they've gotten their group off the ground, they've been meeting for uh, about over two and a half years now. Uh, our group had about a year head start on them in Minneapolis and St. Paul. And as we've been sharing with each other what's worked well, what hasn't worked well, and uh, really being very collaborative and, and open about how those things are working together. Uh, really uh, started to gain some momentum heading into the pandemic. And uh, this going viral topic has a double meaning as we were really starting to see uh, potential for other cities to open up chapters and just start hosting local get togethers uh, right around the same time that we started going into pandemic lockdown. And so that's really slowed their ability to be able to get off the ground and get people together because it, it's hard to get something launched when you aren't able to see each other in person and trying to meet and trying to get that groundswell that we were really able to benefit from in Minneapolis and in Chicago. Uh, so we've got a number of potential chapters that are looking to get started. And in the meantime, we've been having more of our meetings virtual and have been able to accommodate everybody from across the country who wanted to participate. So now you know a little bit more uh, about where we've come from. I'll tell you a little bit more about who we are. Um, we really are focused on this mission of getting people together around this networking collaboration for the purposes of sharing the knowledge about intelligent buildings and pass along best practices. And when it comes down to it, a lot of what we have to talk about is not proprietary information that we all have to guard very carefully. We're very open about talking about the industry as a whole and what uh, we see as being some of those hurdles we've got to get over, uh, where we're able to find uh, inroads that we're making with end users and getting more of the adoption. And you know, as people show up to these meetings, we're saying, you know, check your ego at the door. Uh, we're not here representing our companies. We're here representing each other's common passion for intelligent buildings. So that's really what we're looking to try and uh, try and share when we're getting people together. And it's really a broad range of folks. I say, you know, it's all disciplines. So we're seeing people from, uh, you know, the controls world and we're seeing people from the IT world and, you know, AV and security and all these other things that go into our division 27, 28 packages, um, as well as general contractors and helping them understand how they could buy out packages, helping us understand what do they look for as they're trying to scope out their work and uh, you know, getting the integrators into the room when the solution OEMs, building owners and operators, and even students, which I think we all recognize we need to try and do more to recruit in this industry. And so it's been great being able to see some of those people who have been able to participate. So talk a little bit about where we've come from and where we are right now. I'm gonna turn over to Ben and he can talk a little bit as our incoming president for this next year about where this group is gonna be headed. Sure. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate that. Um, I think, um, you know, we've really been in formulation from, from that roving band of uh, cocktail and, and brewery tours and presentations and knowledge sharing events to really uh, formulating uh, an organization. And so, um, you know, we've had a steering committee um, advisory group that goes well beyond the Twin Cities area and has national uh, contributors. Um, and over the past few years, I've been helping to bring together and formulate this organization. Um, so we are uh, really at that point where we've created um, a national uh, nonprofit organization for building intelligence group and have uh, had our executive committee in place for uh, the, the year since January of 2021 and are rolling out. We've got some combined subcommittees in terms of an org structure standpoint with the events and programming and content, uh, much of which comes about through collaboration with uh, you know, complementary and uh, shared values and interests organizations. Uh, so uh, apropos that we're here, in October, uh, thank you for inviting us to, to join in the, the Monday live discussion with you. Hopefully we'll be able to carry forward even more collaborative efforts. Um, 
but uh, a lot of that uh, work to date has been in collaboration with, with other organizations and, and joint programming development. Uh, we've got a marketing and membership committee that is uh, spinning up and, and activated now um, and uh, really working toward uh, a major membership drive and having that uh, formally in place in early 2022. Uh, and then really the, the core uh, group that we had a subcommittee putting together the, the incorporation and finance rules and regulation that's uh, carrying that forward from a governance and uh, operational management standpoint. So we'll, as we grow and expand, we'll, we'll look to uh, break those out into potentially other organizations, but that's a, a high level look at the, the structure and evolution. Um, uh, it was just a sampling of types of events that we've held, you know, a lot, we started with a lot of different brewery meetups and then moved into virtual, uh, particularly as we got more national participation, uh, as well as the 2020 uh, going viral year, um, had, uh, have been doing more virtual presentations. Um, the origin started with uh, Big TC in the Twin Cities and then uh, Big Shy Chicago, and we have several in formulation um, throughout the country right now, and then a few more that are further out in development with a couple in Florida and, and uh, one in Austin as well, but um, we, uh, we have various people that are contributing, stepping up to formulate. So we're in the works to really build out those chapters, get the committees working and really um, you know, go from formulation into uh, really scaling and, and uh, collaborating more with other organizations and, and getting that representative membership from the cross-disciplinary uh, group of folks that contribute. So, um, so our future is really that transition from a current working board to having those committees and chapters expanded and developed doing the membership drive and, and really building out the, the programs, the content, the resource libraries, and, uh, and then engaging with other organizations such as uh, yourself. So if you want to participate in Building Intelligence Group, we'd love to have you visit uh, buildingintelligencegroup.org and subscribe, follow our social profiles. Um, we'd love to have you join us for meetings, join as a member uh, or contribute and or contribute on uh, subcommittees that we mentioned, uh, as well as on programming. And uh, if you're uh, so inclined and you don't have uh, such a local meetup, we'd love to uh, work with you to organize a local chapter as well. I think we just have contact info there, so. Yeah, I've just pasted the, the link to your site on. Oh, on thank you. Chat. Appreciate that. Great. And uh, thank you for that um, introduction. I think that that's great. Uh, it's it's uh, strange that you were you you you're very focused on physical uh, initially anyway, and we're very focused on virtual and it's kind of how the world works right now. <laughs> so right. happy to uh, open it up to to the team to ask questions or see where we go. Yeah, a couple of questions. I mean, one, one I suppose is you've got all the different chapters. How do you, I mean, obviously usually the, the power of these things is in the numbers of getting, how do you coordinate with all the different chapters? I mean, it's, is it something that, that works quite well or does everybody work in isolation? Yeah, you know, Roger, many of those chapters are, um, people who have not even met in person together yet. And we've taken those chapter leaders and incorporated them into our steering committee. So for the last you know, couple of years, they've still been participants in the overall organization, whether they do have that on the ground uh, membership. And so as we're working forward, that is one of the things we're working to understand with those chapter leaders, what do they really need from a national organization for support? And we do wanna make sure that they are able to have their individual character and we recognize that what we need in the Twin Cities, the conversations we're having, our level of sophistication is different from what we're seeing out of that Chicago chapter. And that's just fine. Uh, you know, they have a little bit of a different format for meetings. So we're really offering guidance on what's worked well and what hasn't more than trying to say here is a rigid structure that you need to adhere to. We want to make sure that this is something that's really valuable for the people in the, the place and time that they are, and rather than trying to just, you know, dictate to them what things are going to work well. Uh, well, I'll just add to that that I think the the ability for us to bring together uh, programming 
and as we get as we get more and more virtual and national uh, working across those chapters, we've done uh, joint joint sessions with Big Shy and, and plan to do them with other chapters as well. So um, I think a, a lot of that collaboration, we, we've had them visit the Twin Cities. Um, we're hopefully able to join them in Chicago and uh, try to do a little bit of physical um, networking and collaboration, but, um, but we have seen some joint programming and being able to share that more widely than just in the local regions where the physical meetings are taking place. Hey, Brad, Ben, Mark, a uh, couple of question for you guys. So looking at the organization big, as well as now putting on your, your day job, your professional job, what are the top three things that you feel that most of your clients are asking about with respect to smart buildings? In other words, what areas are they go, oh, I want a smart building and I want this, I want that or whatever. So can you kind of elaborate a little bit on that from both, both perspectives, please? Ben, you'll probably have a different perspective than I do. You want to lead us off? Sure. Yeah. And given the nature of uh, the work I'm doing, you know, it's primarily uh, around energy efficiency. And so oftentimes that's starting with um, HVAC controls and adding sensing and monitoring and remote control capabilities. Um, the interesting part for me is that I'm typically working in buildings that didn't already have uh, VAS in place. So the bigger challenges are education and making you know, it's really with the building owners and end users, making them aware of what's possible and the value proposition for it today, uh, because um, you know, the average age of existing buildings being 53 years old, um, which is, is the same as me. Uh, so uh, pre-internet, pre-IoT, um, you know, a lot of technological advances. You guys mentioned some of the, the startup companies that are uh, really changing the shape of, of the industry and it's making it a uh, much greater, quicker value proposition. So it's, it's more a matter of awareness and the business case uh, from my perspective and then with a heavy orientation toward what the energy and uh, consumption and conservation and, and data and insights around operations uh, looks like primarily around HVAC. Um, but that's, uh, that's, that's my answer from my perspective. I'm sure Brad has a, a different take on it. Yeah, you know, the energy and sustainability is something that's important. Our clients, you know, recognize that this will be a contributing factor to that, but they've already got programs in place. They might be lead certified, they might be well. Uh, and more of the driver even than energy that's getting people to open up their pocketbooks is operational efficiency and helping to streamline uh, labor automation. They're also very interested in that occupant experience. So whether that's, you know, in workplace and making people more productive or if that's in healthcare and trying to improve HCAP scores, uh, it's usually something that is a pretty key focal point for our clients. And then uh, safety and security is another one of the big topics. So we always build these uh, use cases around, you know, what are the business needs? And these are the common ones that I keep seeing you know, across the industry. Uh, from my perspective, healthcare has been a very big uh, driver of this, uh, where they've got a lot of systems in the building. You know, a lot of these things are not working in concert right now. Uh, and they recognize there's some opportunity here. And a lot of times they say, hey, I want that hospital of the future. I want that intelligent building. I don't even know exactly what I'm asking for, but I know I should be asking that question. And so that's where we can come in there with our process that really starts with those business needs and do an assessment to help them identify where is it that they really could be getting the most value out of spending their money. And it might be a return on value, not a return on investment. That was something that one of the uh, panelists educated me on during one of our earlier sessions this year. And uh, you know, really thinking about it uh, in terms of how, how do you take where you know, uh, you know, based on whatever data we're able to gather that we're going to make an impact and uh, applying that to uh, how we prioritize which things we're going to be able to do today and what things we're going to put on a roadmap and be able to do tomorrow as we're building in the right infrastructure and space uh, to accommodate those future needs. So we're looking to make sure that we're not closing the doors on future opportunities and trying to stay as open and accessible as possible. Are decarbonization and electrification on the table with most of your clients or not? 
yeah, Ken, uh, to, to some extent, you know, decarbonization is definitely one of the things that we're focused on. We've got a team of structural engineers who are looking at embodied carbon and, uh, you know, it really kind of goes beyond just them. Uh, within every of the, every one of our practice groups at HGA, there, there tends to be, uh, you know, a look at what materials we're using, what opportunities there are for reuse and how we're able to really focus on that. Um, the electrification is something that's growing some momentum. Uh, I think that uh, as we see more regulation, it helps favor that. We'll see a lot more adoption around that. But right now, it's something that uh, certain uh, clients who are you know, thinking about net zero and push beyond that are bringing us and asking us for guidance on how do we help to implement that as part of an overall um, you know, facilities management and uh, energy generation program. So I've got a question. Uh, how are you trying to differentiate between the big chapters and, because this was asked by somebody on the chat just a minute ago, uh, differentiating between big and say a, a local ASHRAE chapter or a local AWE chapter? You know, I, a real big differentiator is that we're collaborative, you know, way beyond just the HVAC uh, that ASHRAE is going to be yeah. focused on, way beyond any of these other groups. But uh, that's that being said, we still want to be collaborative. Uh, there's a really good ASHRAE, uh, Big Shy collaborative event uh, that mm -hmm. happened last year, 18 months ago. It's hard to keep track of time these days. And so uh, we're wanting to play nicely in the sandbox and be supportive of everybody. And, you know, even from uh, the last 12, 18 months, just this industry is, is evolving. Uh, Monday Live isn't something that existed at that point. Uh, mm -hmm. So understanding what else is out there uh, and how are we differentiating again, to serve the needs of whatever the industry is at right now. Um, so it's again, looking at what uh, Nexus Labs is doing and going, okay, well, there were some things that they might have been, uh, they were doing, we might've been considering. And, you know, as we look at how do we make sure that they're able to add value and we're adding value, uh, trying not to compete against each other because we felt that that's not something that's going to be helpful to the industry as a whole, having multiple groups like this, just, uh, you know, fragmenting the conversation and siphoning uh, from each other's programs and each other's membership. So um, that's been one of the ways that some of these groups have been popping up around the country is that uh, somebody else gets this great idea of, hey, we can do the same thing and just hosting some people here to have a local discussions. And uh, the ones we've been put in touch with we kind of jump in and say, hey, it sounds like we're really on the same page with what our mission is and how we're trying to go about it. Could we join forces instead of competing with each other? And so far, you know, the answer has been yes. Let's make sure that we're all supporting this. Uh, Rory likes to say that uh, rising tide lifts all ships. And you know, from the beginning, I've said, let's, let's work on growing the pie and then we'll worry about competing over bigger slices of the pie once we get down the road. But at this point, all those egos are checked at the door. We're not thinking about this from our competitive standpoints. We'll go back to our day jobs and worry about that. Yeah. Okay. So follow-up question. Um, your membership is... Do you, do you feel like you're getting a good balance between suppliers and end users, building owners slash end users? You know, um, a lot of our initial membership has been practitioners, contractors, and right. vendors. Um, we have a goal to have much better end user, you know, owner, manager representation, including, you know, you know the CRE groups, prop tech folks. Um, right. You know the the BOMAs and IRAMs and um, uh, as well as just general building and property management uh, organizations. So um, I think we're probably underrepresented versus our goal, but yeah. are going to make that part of our membership drive to to bring that set of stakeholders yeah. and their voices. That would be great, Ben. Uh, I think you know Monday Live, our our panel here has. Um, uh, talked a lot about the challenges of getting the, the buyers, if you will, educated on what's possible. And you, you, met, you alluded to that earlier, um, uh, you know, uh, with, with the stock of buildings being five decades old and explaining to an owner what's possible now versus, you know, what it looked like when they bought the building four or five decades ago. Uh, that's so important. And it's not just important from a, technology adoption perspective, but the other uh, critical area that we keep talking about as a challenge is moving from um, a strictly CapEx driven model to one that's much more OpEx uh, oriented uh, because all of these en enhancements, if you will, in terms of operating 
uh, outcomes is is dependent on on um, the degree to which there's money available to keep these systems functioning and improving over time. Uh, so whether it's you know uh, you know analytics or cybersecurity, um, all of these things take round the clock effort. And, and but if there's no money in the budget for doing that, then you're not going to get the outcome that the people say they want. So, Nate, you remind me of a graphic, a simple visual but very powerful of, just of an inverted triangle, just the design build cost relative to the vast majority of owning and managing a building over time, and right. not even factoring all the, the softer side of those costs with the occupant experience, health, wellness, productivity, and so forth. So yep. uh, yeah, making that case so that um, with new builds or expansions, it's not value engineered out or for the existing buildings, recognizing the impact it can have. And, and even though we have an energy focus from what the, this, the implementations I work on, oftentimes we're seeing greater uh, immediate results in terms of operational and particularly in 2020 with remote management capabilities. Hmm. Had a kind of a big picture observation. It appears that you've uh, you've grown your group from close community and and well found and ex, uh, ex, exploit exploited. That's not quite the right word, but uh, uh, the the local talent in your towns, and then you built that model out. COVID comes along and makes it difficult for all that to happen. And now you fall into the power of collab online collaboration. Um, it seems to me you're heading towards a mosaic uh, where you will have a greater piece of, of online uh, uh, presence. And as that grows, I think also you tend, you could potentially grow out of grow out of America and kind of go global, uh, which would both benefit from pulling information in and, uh, and, and basically sharing that information with your close community. I think the other feature I see that you potentially can do is you can use your close communities to basically digest and condense all of this global information. Can you make any comments on that? Yeah, Ken, we you know really viewed us going into our uh, March 2020 session, which had to kind of go emergency virtual as an opportunity. And we said, all right, well, let's let's see what this gives us when we're able to be virtual. And uh, we've continued to host quarterly events and uh, they've all been virtual and realizing that this is a wonderful way of being able to get people from around the country and around the world. I've had people ping me on chat that, and they're saying, hey, I'm coming in from Japan, and I don't know how they're staying up so late to participate in our events, but I'm glad that they are. So um, it's something we're going to continue to do as we're moving into our next year. And we're starting to program the 2022 events and looking at uh, events going back to a uh, previous comment about how are we able to engage more of the end users and get them to be attending, uh, but you know, not just looking at uh, how do we uh, kind of keep this going with the group we already have, but how do we grow this group and make sure that we're really getting voices representative of the industry as we're looking for the people who are participating in those panels and uh, all the discussions and presentations that we're going to be having lined up coming up here in the near future. Ben, you have some thoughts you wanted to add? I, I just thought it was interesting trying to take our uh, happy hour networking from breweries into a virtual happy hour environment. We I, I want to congratulate Brad and the team for orchestrating a virtual beer tasting with Prize Brewery, where we distributed at multiple hotels <laughs> throughout the Twin Cities packets uh, and then had a guided uh, tasting. So we were able to bring some of that experience you know, into the virtual environment. Not that we're all about drinking beer, but sometimes that those have been some of our most popular events. You know, we'll, we'll be able to uh, just have a little section off at one of the local tap rooms. We've got a lot of great ones to choose from here in the Twin Cities. And uh, just getting a corporate sponsor to be able to cover that bar tab and to bring a little bit of food to lay out on the table for people. And there really isn't uh, a focus to those meetings. Uh, we may have five, 10 minutes for that sponsor to be able to tell us about themselves. But uh, really, it's just about getting people together to network and talk 
And you know, some successes we've heard out of that are people saying we're going after projects together and we never would have even known that that other team had good complementary skills to what we have, never would have had those contacts if it wasn't for just getting around and talking over a beer or networking during one of our education meetings. I applaud that. I applaud that approach uh, as the uh, as the past uh, Ashery chapter president and also president of AAE. Uh, we found that uh, yeah, just that combination. Nothing, nothing did that collaboration, and especially across the contractor, owner, uh, consultant, uh, supplier, brought those people into the same room and had them drink the same beer. Very important. Do you, do you have thoughts about um, bringing the different chapters together for a, a, a big big meeting at some point? Maybe at, um, maybe as a sidecar to like HR or something like that? Is that anywhere in the thinking? Yeah, Ben, what do you think? Yeah, so, I mean, we're, we are all volunteer at the moment and, um, you know, just managing some of the local groups and trying to spin up the, um, the, the regional chapters is, um, is a challenge and we still have to get the, the membership and sponsorship beyond just event specific, physical event specific sponsorship and have, you know, the revenue stream and just monetization to fund some of that. I, I've worked on large conferences um, in the past and I know the resource load it takes to orchestrate that well, but I like the idea of riding the coattails of another organization that might bring uh, those folks together to start with. Um, definitely, I think, you know, <laughs> we, we've got our goals that we're working toward and you guys have just given us national conference and international expansion is uh, <laughs> next gen. Uh, I want you to get bored. Targets, right? <laughs> well, I was thinking more of a national beer tasting. That's uh, right. <laughs> it could be popular, but anyway. Yeah. International. Right. international. Well, I, I think it's time for big to start brewing their own beer, you know, That's and right. let's, let's market this thing, you know. <laughs> right. a, new, a new revenue stream. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. It, 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 exactly. And, it, and it can be done yeah. with smart technology and everything else, you know. So right. anyway. We'll, we'll um, tap our, our finance and uh, regulations committee to look into getting our TTB licensure. <laughs> start distributing. Yeah, I like the idea, Mark. Um, you know, these are all ideas that, uh, aside from the brewery, that are all on our roadmap, and we would like to be able to have a conference. We would like to be um, pulling together a lot more education materials besides just the ones that we're, uh, you know, recording and distributing now, which is what we're doing with our, our uh, meetings that we're doing virtually and posting on our YouTube channel. Um, you know, we would really like to be able to have a resource library and have considered uh, some other, you know, industry analyses that we might be conducting as part of our monetization strategy. These are all things that are still in development, and so. Um, as we're kind of asking at this point uh, for anybody who wants to be participating in these subcommittees, anybody who wants to uh, get something started in their own local community that uh, you know, really what we're, we're trying to do is um, get that input on what do you need from us as this national chapter as we're looking at you know, franchising the, uh, those local mm -hmm. groups. And uh, this is the exciting part here is we are not this polished organization that's the size of uh, you know, one of these well-established groups or like, like BCIA, who you had on uh, last week, right? This, this is going to be uh, getting at the ground level and be able to start shaping something, you know, from its core. And I think that's the exciting part of it. That might also be the scary part of it for some people, if that's not where you want to get in on it, but uh, it has a real kind of startup mentality. And we're still in those early stages of this startup as we're starting to move this thing forward, but it's definitely got legs and it's go been going viral, you know, all on its own and just kind of seeing it all uh, taking shape as it goes. has been very exciting. I'd never expected that we'd be in this standpoint i kind of figured somebody like realcom or you know places where they're already bringing together a lot of these groups would find out what we we're doing we've proven it with a little proof of concept and get adopted but as we put that steering committee together they all were very passionate about now this is something we think we can take in our own direction and let's let's just uh, go for it and see where it goes here's an interesting know, go ahead Anthony. you're all uh, all the members funding you know something here or is there any contributions as is there some finances in this yeah so to date uh we've been just uh sponsor um funded primarily around events and programming um we are establishing a, a membership 
model um, as a pretty minimal individual level membership and then a, a corporate group uh, aspect as well. Um, but we're trying to make it easy enough for individuals who are motivated and interested to participate without uh, a burden and also have uh, special student pricing. We've done some, some work with community and technical colleges uh, as well. But the short answer is historically it's been sponsorship driven and going to a model that has both sponsorship and membership fees to, to fuel the organization cover mm -hmm. some of the overhead. Yeah, that's a kind of interesting question. comment from Melissa. Uh, <laughs> what resources and support do your members need to help with human energy optimi optimization topics, operational efficiency, productivity? And I think, you know, this whole idea about uh, the challenge every one of us has in the industry is the, the human challenge, getting more people involved, getting more jobs filled and so forth and so on. So there you go. I, what do you guys think about her question or thoughts about resources that, and support? To... <clears throat> go ahead, Ben. No, we, we need all the support we can get. Uh, <laughs> we're we're uh, still trying to ramp up and scale the committees and the, um, and the teams that are contributing, moving from a working board to um, committees and chapters who, who are all working in sync and sharing um you know part of this effort and related to the previous question was we're doing something with market assessment saying you know identifying these pockets and silos or organizations of related interests around intelligent build, buildings to see what already exists and where are we adding value as a as a distinct organization we don't want to reinvent the wheel if you guys if there's templates and resource sets that are already identified we're trying to help bring those together and list them but um i think the human energy component of it uh that it's it's all volunteer contributions at this time so we you know we need to find people of interest and are um you know motivated to to participate at just about any level um i think we still haven't cast the net wide enough in terms of making people aware of the organization. And um, so we still have more to do there. Um, so I don't know if that's directly answering the, the question, but I think, you know, that's that's kind of where we're at in terms of the, the volunteer-based uh, resource needs and trying to identify those people. So we appreciate amplification of messaging and invitations through your networks and uh, through social and otherwise is appropriate. M Melissa, uh, who, who asked the question, yeah. is uh, somebody that's working with, with us, with Monday Live and with the coalition on workforce development. So I think that was the angle that she was asking the question from. In terms of ben uh, and Brad, are you actively trying to encourage like other cities and so forth to get started? And if so, what would you recommend that somebody reach out and contact you guys to coordinate or what? Yeah, that'd be the best way would be to get in touch either with us personally or through the website. Um, you go in there and fill out one of the, the registration forms. You can put what you're interested in on there or um, hit us up at uh, info at buildingintelligencegroup.org email address. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of conversations with people who are interested in you know, having something local and either put them in touch with the people who are organizing that or give them a little bit of a taste of what it would take for them to be able to get folks together. And, you know, it's really the intent that it's all a low lift of just getting started, you know, it, having a conversation. If it's just you and somebody else on a bar stool, that's, that's great. That's a place to start. And it, it does tend to, um, you know, end up as, as you're posting about it, talking about it, it the, the virality uh, of the nature of how it's spreading has been working pretty well for us and you know been alludes to we're going to be pushing into this more concerted member drive but uh, the whole idea has been keep it low lift we're simultaneously optimizing these two equations of uh, you know what is the minimum effort we can put in to be able to get the maximum results and add value for those people who are attending so uh, the I think that the um, effort and production value uh, continues to go up as we be more deliberate about this and, and get more people who are participating both in attending and helping to produce 
Um, but it's, it's still kind of the idea is to make this as easy as possible for somebody in their local market to just be able to make a few phone calls and have a place to be able to meet. Uh, if you're a gregarious person who's a good networker, uh, and you, especially if you cross some of the work streams between these different subject matters, then you're a pretty good candidate for being a person who's just kind of point to get something going in your local community. And, you know, we've got people from across the country in, in this group. We've got people who serve a lot of the country. So everyone knows people in, in uh, all these various cities. And uh, so we've got lists of people to target in places where we might not even have a leader yet, but we know these are folks who are going to be interested in participating once we get something going. So we just try and share all that and be as transparent as we can with anybody who's looking to try and get organized and, help us you know, participate in any way that they can. Okay, I've got a couple of suggestions that uh, one would be, I just posted the address for being an endorsing organization for AHR. The other thing uh, I could maybe help you with is get you a education slot uh, in Vegas. So if uh, you would show up and just do a one hour blurb and tell the world about who you are and uh, I think that would be uh, a worthwhile, uh, world, worthwhile effort anyway. So we're, we're, we've got uh, two days of programming, uh, but uh, there's usually a, a few other slots that I might be able to, we might be able to talk to the folks and, and get you in. Uh, we should talk offline. Sure. That'd be great. If I know how to reach you, Ken, I'll reach out about that. Appreciate it. And, and of course, you know, we're part of the, reason you're here is that we are trying to figure out some kind of way to collaborate between this group, between Monday Live and um, the, the, the big chapters, uh, and also with the Coalition for Smarter Buildings. So and the, the, interestingly, these three organizations are basically all startups, right? So we're all of the same age. So it's kind of interesting what's going on in the industry um, on, on that front. And Anthony, we need to take a remaining minutes we've got here to tease out our upcoming programs. Um, so we, we do have a plan to get a meeting set up with with uh, Monday Live and uh, C4SB, thinking those would probably be good as one session uh, during one of our upcoming quarterly virtual events. So we're looking at February uh, for that. We're going to circle back around with uh, this group to make sure that the timings are going to work on that, but uh, definitely getting in early early half of next year to be able to have that meeting. And then our November meeting is going to be on November 11th at 11 a.m. And it's with Nexus Labs. It's going to be uh, kind of on a topic of collaboration and, and community in smart buildings. And so James Dice is going to lead our panel discussion. And uh, we'll have a couple panelists from the Building Intelligence Group, a couple panelists from the Nexus community, and talking around uh, kind of the regionality of intelligent buildings and you know, hopefully get a taste for how things you know, kind of change and what we have in common between these different markets. Great, that sounds that sounds wonderful. Yeah, so yeah, I, I think there's collaboration opportunity, you know, just with uh, cross-pollinating, just uh, sharing each other's information with our respective networks and audiences, doing joint programming, such as the proposed February event. Um, and then also looking at uh, resource directory and library and uh, you know review what you've got available you it's great you've got the weekly sessions rich in content and participants so um you know we're not quite to that frequency on the big side but um as much as possible try to to raise the waters for all and, and share your information and ask that you share in you know with your networks as well as we go along yeah you may, you mentioned something of a resource place uh, we've talked about that quite a bit on monday live on and off um, it seems to be something that is missing from from the industry um, there's lots of material but it's kind of all over the place and nice, yeah. maybe, maybe collaboratively we can sort yeah. of fix that problem yeah we're looking to develop you know um, use case scenarios and case studies, best practice, you know, examples that'll particularly help with some of the building and end users um, in, in grokking it, um, but also looking at templates and uh, like templates for uh, building intelligence projects, specs and inputs. And yeah, really pulling that together and organizing. I think we could do a lot together. Yeah, we don't well, have obviously to the coalition's obviously working on that. 
Yeah, as, as you know, so. our next step, we want to make sure we're tearing down the silos between all of the startups of volunteer led organizations who are starting to pull people together from the building intelligence community. So wherever we can, we'll knock down those walls. Yeah, I mean, we're a nonprofit. We're not looking to uh, you know, do anything other than try and further this cause. So anything we could be doing collaboratively, I think is better rather than putting endless effort in in parallel. Hmm. So uh, using... Brad, Brad, one of the step changes we have with the BCIA here was uh, getting a, a scalable and affordable membership uh, fees, but being able to employ uh, one person, you know, just full time makes such a difference because everybody's got day jobs, right? And, you know, when you've got someone on it 20, you know, working full time, it makes such a significant difference mm -hmm. um, to actually get things done, coordinate groups and stuff. But it, it does take time to get to that point, but they, you kind of, you know, it does make that step change. Yeah, I started in on your presentation yeah, and and took that away that, um, yeah, we definitely have that in the vision. I don't, we'll see if we can get it in in 2022 with the membership drive and everything else going forward, but we could use that a dedicated resource like that. Yeah, we're going to set up a call in a couple of weeks here with you, Roger, and try and learn a little bit more from your experiences. And, you know, we're really open to any, any suggestions anybody else has on how this could best serve you know, your local community, the industry as a whole. Uh, we're very, uh, you know, we checked our egos at the door as well. We're very open to learning from everybody. It's kind of what the whole purpose of getting people together and networking is. Yep. So we're coming up to the top of the hour, right? Any other sort of big questions? Big questions to the big guys? <laughs> it's a pun we welcome. Yes. <laughs> Notice there's a chat uh, point about District 2030. That's um, 2030 District, I think David was talking about. Oh, okay, yeah. Which is um, smart city kind of ish, right? Initiative. Yeah, we'll uh, take a closer look at collaborating there. Definitely As a that. first meet, I think this is a, a great collaboration. Uh, I've learned lots, and uh, it. What amazes me is that you guys have gone so far and I've heard so little about you. Never even seen an article on automated buildings. So bad is that? I think that's because they're very local. They're very focused on local. And therefore, maybe they didn't really want to do that national thing initially. It has been, yeah. This has been kind of our focus for this year is we put a press release together uh, once we incorporated. And we recognize it's a bit early to say, hey, look, we're ready to go because we're really saying, you know, we're ready to build with you at this point. But yeah, we do want to start getting yeah. that message out there. It's uh, thank you again for having the opportunity to present to this group and just being able to make some more connections and continue to watch that snowball roll downhill and gain momentum. Absolutely. Yeah. And most of the focus has, has been on pro programming live, you know, virtual and physical event programming, but we, we do need to crank up the, uh, the content development engine and do more publishing and articles. And um, we, we intend to build some of those resources and contribute those to uh, publications and, and sites. So we welcome the opportunity. And we thank you for the time today. Okay, so let's bring this to a wrap. We're right at the top of the hour. Thank you very much, Ben and, and Brad for joining us and uh, do encourage everybody to uh, uh, look at their website and, and join them or start a chapter or something or communicate with them or something and uh, hopefully we can uh, collaboratively change the industry to be something better so thanks uh, for everybody as well for being here and a video of uh, this show will be up tomorrow and uh, we will be back next week thank you all bye thanks guys Cheers. bye, bye. 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 Take care.